hello everyone. Uh, I'm Alessandro. I'm a software engineer on uh, Google Play, and I'm working on dynamic delivery and app updates. Hi, I'm Pietro. I work uh, as a, at Google as an Android developer advocate. And I'm Amrit Sanjeev. I'm a partner devrel uh, advocate at Google. So let's start with a quick recap of in-app updates. This year at I.O., we introduced the in-app updates API, which allowed you developers to inform your users when a new update is available for them in Play Store. Now, many of you might be thinking why you need a new API when there is auto-updates in play. But in the real world, a lot of users actually turn off auto-updates because they are concerned about how much data bandwidth it's using. Moreover, there are many users who actually set this up in a way that it only works when they're connected to Wi-Fi. And they don't connect to Wi-Fi for extended periods of time. Which means that these users are experiencing an older version of the app and not seeing all the new features, bug fixes, and security updates that you're actually rolling out. There are two ways in which you can actually show in-app updates. One is an immediate flow, where when the user clicks to update, the rest of the UX is completely managed by the Play library. This is the easiest way to integrate. But if you want more control over the UX, you also have the flexible flow. Here, when the user chooses to click update, the control is returned back to the app. And the user can continue to use the app while the update downloads in the background. This way, when the download is completed, the play library then informs the app that informs the app that the download is complete which the app can then you choose an appropriate time to tell the user to complete installation and talking about some of the benefits that you have from a developer's perspective you are communicating the update size upfront this is a factor that people use to decide whether they should update immediately or not it also respects all the play distribution rules, which means if you're actually rolling this out only to a small percentage of your users in a certain channel, here, only those users who are in that channel and are in that bucket, uh, the percentage, a small percentage, will actually receive these updates. This is not a feature that was possible with many of the libraries out there, which used something like remote config to uh, show the dialogue to the user. It also means that your, because your users are updating faster, there are less versions, of your, uh, less versions of your code which is supported in production, thereby reducing your support costs. And it's really simple and easy to integrate. And from a user's perspective, there's a clear reduction in install friction. Not only that, the user can update the app without leaving the app at all. And the update is actually downloaded in the background. So the user's workflow is not interrupted while the update is getting downloaded. There's also some smarts into this API. Imagine uh, your device is running out of battery, or if it's not connected to the internet. And in such conditions, this API does not actually prompt the user to update, because those are conditions under which the user is most likely not update. So these smarts are also there in the app. Now, quickly looking at some of the results that we've seen with partners who've adopted this. Reify, which is a recipe app from India, has seen over 40% of their users upgrading within the first 30 days after they have rolled this API out into production. Not only that, they have seen a nearly 40% reduction in the time taken for 50% of their users to upgrade to the new version. The second example that I want to call out is Redbus. Redbus actually saw that the time taken for 40% of their users to upgrade to the new version reduced from 10 to 3 days after they introduced this API into their code base. And lastly, I want to call out Swiggy, which is a food delivery app from India. They saw an increase of 0.7 million users updating the app after they introduced this API. As these numbers suggest, the apps clearly benefit from users updating quickly. And the users also benefit because they see the new features and bug fixes much before, uh, much earlier in the cycle. Now I want to hand it over to my colleague Pedro to talk to you about testing. Over to you. Thank you, Amrit. Since the introduction of uh, in-app updates at uh, DCRIO, uh, one of the main feature requests that we got from users uh, 
is how we can test in app update easily. And testing here is really in three phases. Uh, during development, uh, at the time of the release, uh, and uh, to support uh, existing release, to look at bugs, uh, bug uh, and so on. So for uh, uh, testing during development, uh, we have uh, the fake update manager, where you can uh, use in your unit test to control and check uh, how is the uh, logic and the UI of your uh, in-app updates. So you can uh, set up uh, uh, that there is an update available, then you call uh, all of your code uh, and UI, and, uh, and then you can drive uh, the update in this way. You can simulate that the user accept the update, you can start the download, and you can simulate that the download completes. So this allows you to do unit testing uh, and check uh, how your uh, update code uh, works. Next uh, is uh, testing uh, when you have a new release, so when you want to introduce beta tester. And one other feature we introduce at, uh, at the IODZR is uh, internal app sharing. With internal app sharing, what you do is that you upload an app bundle or an APK. This genera a play generates for you a shareable URL, and the tester can use this URL to test uh, the application and the bundle with dynamic delivery on the device. We are now announcing that we are enabling to use internal app sharing to test your in-app updates uh, API flow. So how does it work in internal app sharing? On the console, you have this web page uh, where you upload the APK or the app bundle, and it's generating for you the, uh, the link. You need to set up who can uh, upload the APK and the bundle, and who can use the link uh, that is generated. The other things to remember is that Play is going to sign a specific, uh, a different, with a different uh, certificate, your application in this case. So if you are using third-party SDK that needs to have the certificate, you need to download from here. And uh, you can use in this case, uh, uh, like for every other times that you use internal app sharing, the bug builds, uh, the version code is not important that you up, uh, increment every time the, uh, the version code because Play is going to place a new version code for you when you, you upload a new a, a APK or a new app bundle. Then the configuration of the console, you need to enable internal app sharing on the device, on the client. So you open the Play application on the device, in the settings, you click, you tap seven times on the version code, you get a new uh, toggle to enable internal app sharing, and you turn it on, and you are good to, know, uh, to, uh, to go testing using internal app sharing. For in-app updates, it's a bit tricky to get the flow uh, at the beginning. So the idea is that you install a version with internal app sharing. You can use then the same, uh, um, upload the same version, get a new link with a new version code generated by, uh, by Play. You open the link on the device, and you get the pop-up with the update. I have a video to explain this a bit more clearly. So you get the pop-up with the update. At this moment, you can go in your application, and the internal uh, and the in-app updates API will see the update at the moment. So you need to follow the link. Don't click on the update button from the uh, Play Store, and then in the uh, in your application, you can complete. Uh, you can check that the in-app update works. The third place where you can do testing, it's for version uh, that are or have already been released. If you have a bug, uh, uh, someone is reporting a bug that uh, a version that you released three months ago is not updating correctly with, with the new version you are releasing now, we are announcing that we, shortly we will make available historical version links where you can download an APK or a, a, from a, 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 an older version using the a very similar flow and test with this link uh, the version, uh, the update uh, with the new version. So uh, look out for the more information in the coming weeks about uh, historical version links. We will make available shortly. Uh, next is Alexandro that is going to talk about some new exciting feature coming uh, in in-app updates. Yeah, thank you, Pietro. So uh, I'm going to tell you uh, something more about a few new features that we've been working on after Google I.O. based on some of your uh, top asks. Um, so first of all, we're going to introduce um, a couple of new signals that will help you uh, essentially um, decide when to trigger uh, an in-app update, which flow to trigger, and how promptly, how, uh, how, uh, how much to, uh, to promote it in your UI. And these are uh, the update priority and the app staleness. 
Um, secondly, uh, we are also exposing some more fine-grained information uh, about the progress of the update as the update is downloading. So we're going to go through each of them individually very soon, but first let's take a look at a snippet of code to give some more context to this. So here I've got uh, a snippet in my, in my demo app, and here uh, I'm, uh, I'm fetching from, from the API the app update info uh, to detect whether there is an update available or not. Um, and if I see that an update is available, now I have to decide what to do. I need to decide whether to trigger an app update and which flow to use. Um, and uh, this is exactly the situation that will be made simpler by the signals that we are going to expose. Um, so the first signal is priority. Uh, the priority uh, essentially means uh, is, it represents the importance of, the, of an update. Um, and so something that has a higher priority is something that you consider to be of higher value for your user. Um, the priority is something that you define when you, uh, when you release your app uh, for each of your releases, and then it's being propagated through our systems and gets back to you uh, at runtime via the API. Um, and at that point, you can decide to show a different, uh, a different user experience based on the priority of the update. Um, so more concretely, uh, the, uh, the update priority is an integer value that goes between zero and five, um, and we don't mandate the exact semantics of each of the individual values uh, be because we want to make sure that you have the freedom to, uh, to tailor uh, the semantics of these values and to define the, uh, the thresholds based on your app freshness needs. Um, so let's go back to the, uh, to the snippet of code and let's see how, how I'm using it in practice. So here I'm doing something ra rather straightforward. Let me, uh, let me highlight the, uh, the new part. So here I'm doing, like, if, if, uh, if the update priority is bigger than three, then I'm triggering the immediate flow. Otherwise, I'm falling back to the flexible flow. Um, and here, like, the number three is purely arbitrary for, for my app. So you might, uh, you might uh, tailor uh, this value and, and tweak it depending on, on your needs. Um, and uh, this is like a very, very simplified decision tree where I'm using that signal as, uh, as a single signal. But you can imagine to use it in combination with other signals that we provide or that you already have uh, to, uh, to make the best decision possible in this case. Let's move on to the second signal, which is, uh, which is the app staleness. So the app staleness tells, uh, tells you how long the device has known about an update being available for the user. Um, so essentially, um, if, you, uh, if your user has had the app uh, and, and it has been uh, out of date for a longer time, the staleness will be higher. Uh, and so probably the user will, uh, will need to update it uh, more eagerly. Um, and here is an example of how I'm using it. Uh, so here, uh, I'm, what I'm doing is if the staleness is bigger than 90 days, uh, then I'm triggering the media flow. If it's between 30 and 90 days, then I'm triggering the flexible flow. Um, and something that is implicit in here that I want to call out is that like, what I'm doing is if, uh, if the uh, app is fresher than 30, well, it's less stale than 30 days, uh, then I'm not triggering uh, an in-app update at all. So uh, this is also a very important decision to make, like when to decide to trigger the, uh, the update at all, uh, because like sometimes you don't want to, uh, to notify your users uh, unnecessarily if the, if the app is already fresh enough, right? Um, and now, uh, let's move on and let's assume that you have triggered a flexible flow. Uh, you have triggered a flexible flow and the user has decided uh, to, uh, to consent. So the update has started and the user most likely will stay in the app as the update is downloading. Um, but at the same time, the user might want to know how the, how the update is going, how the download is going. Uh, and they might want to do it without having to get out of the app, because that's the whole point. Uh, so uh, to, uh, to enable uh, such a more immersive experience so that the user stays in the app, uh, we are going to expose a couple of new, uh, uh, new bits of information as the app is downloading, which is, which is like the amount of bytes that we have downloaded so far and the total amount of bytes that we will need to download for the update. What does this enable? So if you look at the, at the right-hand side of the screen, there is like my demo app, uh, where an in-app update is in progress, flexible flow, um, and you see there at the bottom, my app is showing a progress bar uh, that I'm updating in real time so that the user in real time can see uh, how the download is going. Um, and on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see uh, how that is done in code. So here I'm using uh, a listener that I register in the API to receive progress uh, while the while update is happening. Um, and what I'm doing in the listener is pretty simple. So whenever I receive uh, um, an update and, and um, a, a progress date within source status downloading, then I'm updating my UI with the latest values of, of bytes downloaded and to download. 
And all these features, uh, the, uh, the um, update priority, the app staleness, and the more fine-grained information about, about the progress of an update are going to be uh, rolled out very soon. Uh, so please come and talk to us if you would like to be the first ones to try them out. Um, and with this, I'm giving it back to Pietro, who's talking to you about the uh, PlayCore Cotton extension. Thank you, Alessandro. So come and ask uh, uh, to us in the sandbox. Uh, we have seen uh, uh, this exciting new feature that are coming in the in App Updates API. Uh, but PlayCore uh, is something that you can use in Java and in Kotlin. And uh, Android now is a, a Kotlin first uh, uh, platform. So we are uh, we already announced it today in this morning talk on dynamic delivery about the PlayCore uh, KTX. But the PlayCore KTX support also in App Updates. So the PlayCore ATX is an idiomatic API that uh, supports Kotlin, and uh, we are leveraging a few features of Kotlin. Uh, the idea is that uh, we want to simplify the uh, API surface, and uh, we want to promote, uh, a, we want to be opinionated on how to use the, uh, the in-app updates API. So we want to drive the, uh, the uh, developers to use it in the right way. Uh, and we want to leverage uh, the, all the power of Kotlin with coroutines and flow. So to get an example, it's much simpler uh, the in-app uh, update flow than the dynamic delivery. There are less, there are less status here, uh, but it's the same concept. So you, have, uh, you can register for a flow and collect uh, the events coming from, uh, uh, from the uh, underlying PlayCore API. So you can know when uh, the update is available, it's in progress, and it's downloaded. Uh, the other thing is that using coroutines, uh, it's much easier to handle the uh, cancellation and the cleanup. In this sample, well, I'm using a, a view model scope, but the idea is that you can attach uh, this uh, flow to your own uh, coroutine scopes uh, and uh, link this uh, to the uh, life cycle of, the, uh, of your uh, application or the UI that you uh, want to use there. And uh, uh, the last thing is that uh, for uh, uh, developers that are not yet comfortable using Kotlin Flow or they cannot use experimental uh, Kotlin feature, we are exposing a couple of suspended functions, so coroutines, uh, where you can request uh, the app update info and you can request uh, when the update is complete. Uh, and this allows you to simplify a lot uh, the usage of the Play Core API, avoiding to use the task returned by the Play Core API. This library, it's already available. Uh, so we are really open to get feedback. Uh, it's, uh, it's fully functional. Uh, we are implementing most of the feature of PlayCore, uh, but uh, really, uh, and if you want to know more about the PlayCore KTX, I suggest you to take a, a look at the recording of the video that, uh, uh, of the session of this morning on dynamic delivery, where uh, my colleagues have introduced the, uh, the part of the PlayCore KTX uh, covering the dynamic delivery. So again, uh, this is a very quick overview of the uh, PlayCore KTX. Uh, you can come to the sandbox, talk to us, ask information, download the library, and start to test it, uh, and please provide feedback. So thank you, everybody, for uh, coming today, and, uh, and update your app. <laughs>